In a peaceful corner of Austin, Texas, a modest and welcoming house stood out in the neighborhood, where vibrant flowers intertwined with the white fence and the sound of children's laughter filled the air. This was the home that Raymond and Melissa called their own. Married for five years, the young 28-year-old couple seemed, to the outside world, to be the perfect image of a happy married life. Raymond, a man with a serious expression and sharp eyes, was known for both the seriousness with which he approached his work and the undeniable fervor with which he pursued his professional advancement. Standing firm in the renowned corporation where he played his role as a financial analyst, Raymond exuded competence and a desire to progress, a fierce determination that was reflected in the intense sparkle in his eyes whenever he spoke about his professional aspirations. Melissa, he would begin, his voice filled with certainty and his hands outlining the frame of his dreams in the air. One day we will have everything we can imagine. A more spacious house, with a garden and a pool. A luxurious car, glistening under the Texas sun. Vacations that will feel like dreams, exploring paradisiacal beaches and vibrant cities around the world. You'll see. His tone was always resolute, an unwavering determination resonating in every word, as if the mere act of verbalizing his dreams was the first step towards making them a reality. And this was the flame that propelled Raymond, a vision of the future where he and Melissa would live at the pinnacle of prosperity and success. However, the road leading to the realization of these dreams would be filled with unexpected twists and turns, and Raymond would find himself entangled in an intricate game of choices and consequences. Every decision made, every path chosen, would inexorably lead him to the turning point in his life, to the moment when hidden truths would be revealed and the true measure of his character would be tested. Melissa, contrasting with Raymond's feverish ambition, was the embodiment of pure love and unwavering gentleness. Hailing from the countryside of Pennsylvania, she had left the comfort of her family home, the green hills and narrow cobblestone streets of her hometown, to embrace a new life in Austin, Texas, by the side of the man she loved. She had established herself as a kindergarten teacher, a role that seemed tailor-made for her captivating personality and compassionate heart. She possessed an innate charm that attracted children, a magical spark that captured the imagination of the little ones and enveloped them in a warm embrace of learning and fun. Her blue eyes, resembling fragments of the sky on a spring day, shimmered with genuine delight every time she entered the classroom, and her melodious voice wove incredible stories that kept her young students in a trance of pure wonder and fascination. Have you ever heard the story of the rabbit who wanted to fly? Melissa would ask, her eyes gleaming with enthusiasm as the children shook their heads, their eyes wide with curiosity. Now, as she eagerly awaited the birth of her own little miracle, Melissa was filled with dreams and expectations. She imagined what it would be like to teach her own child about the wonders of the world, to tell them stories whispered in their ear, and to see their eyes shine with curiosity and joy. She had no idea of the twists and turns that life was about to offer her, but even in the face of uncertainty, Melissa remained hopeful, her spirit brimming with unwavering love and sweetness. They will have your eyes, Ray, she said softly one night, her hands resting on her swollen belly, her eyes filled with dreams and hopes for their child's future. The five years they had spent together since saying, I do, seemed to have passed in the blink of an eye. From the day they met at a coffee shop to the moment Raymond got down on one knee with a ring in his hand, to the day they crossed the threshold of their home for the first time, every memory was etched in their hearts. They remembered cooking their first dinner together in that tiny kitchen, laughing and making a mess. They remembered the nights spent cuddled on the couch, watching old movies. They remembered how Raymond had painted the guest room blue in anticipation of their child's arrival. Every corner of the house had a story to tell, every object a memory. Yet, while Raymond dreamed of wealth and success, Melissa longed only for the happiness of their family. For her, Raymond's love and affection and the laughter of their unborn child were the true riches, 
the true indicators of success. And as the uncertain future unfolded before them, the home they had built together became the stage for the drama of their lives. The house where Raymond and Melissa resided exuded an aura of simplicity and comfort. It was a home that told stories of generations of Raymond's family, each room filled with precious memories and echoes of past laughter. Pauline, Raymond's mother, had lovingly passed down the legacy to the couple when they got married, an inheritance she hoped would be filled with love and joy. She is all yours now, Raymond, Pauline had said on a sunny day, standing at the front door of the old house, a gentle smile forming on her face as she handed the key to her son. Take good care of her. And take good care of Melissa. A house becomes a home with love, not with bricks and mortar. Although she had given the house to her son and daughter-in-law, the bureaucracy of the property transfer had, for some reason, been postponed. Pauline's name still lingered on the official documents, a neglected formality that would come to play a crucial role in the drama that would unfold in the years to come. Behind her thin framed glasses and quiet demeanor, Pauline was a keen observer. She had a gift for reading people, for sensing subtle changes in mood and behavior, a gift that helped her quietly keep up with the storyline of her son's life. During weekend visits, Pauline would sit in her favorite armchair in the living room, knitting while attentively listening to the conversation and observing the interaction between Raymond and Melissa. She noticed Raymond's forced laughter, Melissa's distant gaze, the growing gaps between them that were becoming increasingly difficult to ignore. Though she never interfered, she held every detail in her heart, a silent guardian of the home that had once been filled with laughter and joy. In a voracious pursuit of climbing the ladder of success, Raymond found himself immersed in a web of high-class connections. It was a network of influence and power that he coveted, a path he believed would lead him to the top of his career. And it was in this complex game of interests and ambitions that he crossed paths with Judith. Judith, the senior manager of the corporation they both worked for, was a woman whose charisma was as undeniable as her business acumen. Divorced and independent, her charm was a captivating contrast to Melissa's gentle delicacy. She exuded unwavering confidence, accentuated by her defiant smile and a laughter that seemed capable of making the world turn at her command. There is more to life than just having a stable job, Raymond, she whispered one night after a business dinner, the red wine enhancing the sensual tone of her voice. There is a world of wealth and luxury waiting for you. We just need to reach out and grab them. It was at that moment that the affair began, a dangerous secret hidden beneath laughter and conspiratorial glances. Raymond's extended work afternoons started turning into evenings. Business meetings transformed into clandestine encounters, while Melissa remained at home, oblivious to the shadow play unfolding around her. Raymond, once an attentive and affectionate husband, began to change. His physical presence was there, but his eyes always seemed distant, lost in thoughts he did not share. His kisses became less frequent, his words, once warm and tender, gave way to a cold silence. Raymond, you seem distant, Melissa murmured one night, her face filled with concern under the dim light of the living room. Is everything okay at work? It's fine, dear, Raymond automatically responded, a superficial smile hiding the truth. Just a lot of work, you know how it is. The gears of a well-orchestrated betrayal were set in motion, but Melissa's heart remained unaware of the emotional earthquake looming ahead. Melissa had always been a woman of keen perception. Her abilities were not confined to the classroom alone but extended to the fabric of her personal life. She sensed, almost intuitively, the slow but steady change in Raymond. However, in her loving heart, she excused her husband's growing coldness, attributing it to work stress and the weight of his professional responsibilities. All of this must be so exhausting for you, Ray, she said on a dark night, gently caressing his hand in a gesture of support. Truths, like wandering comets, 
have a strangely unsettling way of shining in the most unlikely skies. And on this seemingly ordinary day, one of those truths was about to explode into Melissa's world. As she skimmed through the childlike drawings and trembling letters in a forgotten student's notebook, Melissa certainly didn't expect that this mundane object would soon serve as the wind vane of a devastating storm. Her fingers glided over the scribbled pages, her mind wandering in the innocence of childhood reflected in the schoolwork. Determined to address her student's small adversity, Melissa picked up the phone, Judith's number already memorized in her memory due to previous meetings and school encounters. The words flowed easily and automatically, masking the calamity that would soon unfold. Judith, it's Melissa, she began her voice coated with the warmth that came so naturally to her. I believe your daughter left her notebook at school today. I can drop it off at your house on my way back, if that's not an inconvenience. Judith's response was equally nonchalant, concealing the spark of chaos that would soon become a devouring flame. Oh, that would be wonderful, Melissa. Please swing by whenever you can. Unaware of the imminent danger, Judith had no idea that her daughter's teacher and her lover's wife were the same person. And so, with a single phone call, the stage was set for the revelation that would shake Melissa's world to its core. Upon arriving at Judith's house, Melissa was greeted not by the mother of her student but by the familiar face of her husband, clad only in a robe. Her heart raced in her chest, the air seemed to be sucked out of the room, and every sound, every scent, felt amplified. Raymond? Her voice came out as a whisper, surprise mingling with painful confusion. Melissa. I. I can explain, he stammered, surprise clearly visible on his face. But before he could say more, a voice came from inside the house, punctuating the tense silence. Darling. Can you bring the notebook? The word, darling, hit Melissa like a physical blow and in an instant, everything made sense. Raymond's coldness, his long hours at work, the gradual shift in his behavior. The reality of her husband's betrayal struck her with the brutality of a dagger, a pain that penetrated her deeply, shattering her world into fragments. Surprised and bewildered, Raymond found himself cornered, Melissa's shocked expression reflected in his eyes. He swallowed hard, struggling against the words that seemed to stick in his throat. In that moment, all his charm and eloquence melted away, leaving only a man laid bare by his actions. Melissa. He began, his voice trembling, betraying his nervousness. This. This isn't what it looks like, I swear. But the words fell flat, as hollow as the growing space between them. Melissa's expression remained impassive, her pale face accentuated by uncontrollable tears. But in her eyes, a steely resolve began to form. You betrayed me, Raymond, she said, each syllable resonating with raw pain and the sense of betrayal she felt. I can't. I won't accept your apologies. The pregnancy, which should have been a time of celebration and joy, was overshadowed by this brutal betrayal. Melissa, now with a broken heart, found herself on an emotional precipice, teetering precariously on the uncertainty of her future. Raymond, in one final act of cruelty and selfishness, made a decision that amplified Melissa's despair. His face hardened, his expression a cruel amalgamation of remorse and determination. Melissa, you need to leave, he said, his words seeming to choke him even as they left his mouth. This is my home. You need to go. With those words, Melissa's world seemed to crumble, leaving her on the edge of a terrifying reality. Homeless, pregnant, and alone, she faced an uncertain future while Raymond, the man she thought she loved, left her behind without a backward glance. Pauline, the matriarch figure, was a woman of few words but unwavering convictions. Upon receiving the unexpected call, she arrived at the couple's house, where signs of the impending separation were evident. Packed suitcases, avoided glances, a heavy silence hanging in the air. Sitting on the old sofa in the living room, 
Melissa appeared as a shadow of her once joyful and vibrant self, the sparkle in her eyes replaced by deep sadness. Raymond, on the other hand, exuded a harsh arrogance, a wall erected around him, denying any fault. Pauline silently absorbed the scene, a shroud of stillness surrounding her. But despite her apparent calm, indignation seethed within her. She had always valued justice above all else, and what she saw before her was far from just. The home her son and daughter-in-law had shared was being destroyed, joy and love replaced by betrayal and heartbreak. Observing Melissa, so shattered and helpless, Pauline felt her heart constrict. She was pregnant, carrying in her womb an innocent being who would soon enter this turbulent world. And then, seeing Raymond, her own son, wearing a mask of cruelty and disrespect, she knew that something needed to be done. Despite Melissa's expectations that she would stand by her son's side, Pauline knew that justice did not always mean blind loyalty. The decision was not an easy one, but it was necessary. She couldn't stand idly by as her daughter-in-law was expelled from her own home, as her grandchild was ripped away from a loving environment. It was time to intervene. And she would do so with the strength and resolve that had always characterized her life. Rising with the dignity that always defined her, she faced Raymond with steel eyes. Raymond, her voice resonated in the room, clear and firm. You have forfeited the right to call this place home. Raymond seemed stunned, looking at his mother with the expression of a child who has just been scolded. Mom, you can't be serious. He began, but Pauline cut him off with a wave of her hand. I have never been more serious, Raymond, she declared, her eyes shining with unwavering determination. This house will belong to Melissa and my grandson. You have no place here anymore. Raymond, dumbfounded and affronted, reacted with uncontrolled anger. His face reddened, his jaw muscles tensing as he shouted, This is absurd, mother. I will take this to court. This house is rightfully mine. Pauline, however, remained unyielding. Her weathered face held a bitter and sad smile. In her eyes shone the determination of a lighthouse in the midst of a storm. The house is in my name, Raymond, she replied softly, her voice calm but firm amidst the storm of emotions. As long as I am alive, you have no claim to anything. And when I pass, nothing will be yours either. I'm on my way to see my lawyer right now to get everything in order. The house will be Melissa's and the baby's. Pauline's words fell like a hammer, the ensuing silence heavy in the air. She had completely turned the tables, protecting Melissa and the baby from the impending storm her own son had unleashed. Raymond stood there, utterly unprepared for this turn of events. He was powerless, his meticulously crafted hopes and plans now in ruins. He could only watch as his world crumbled, the cold, harsh reality of the consequences of his actions settling upon him. Amidst the chaos, Melissa, still shaken but resolute, accepted Pauline's offer. Her relationship with her mother-in-law, once punctuated by uncomfortable silence and distant respect, blossomed into an unlikely yet welcome friendship. Pauline became a pillar of support for her daughter-in-law, her calm presence serving as a safe harbor in the storm that followed. The rest of the neighborhood, although initially shocked by the scandal's revelation, rallied in solidarity with Melissa. Raymond and Judith's indiscretion had cast an indelible shadow over their names. News of their infamous actions spread through the community like an uncontrollable wildfire, burning all the bridges they had built. In the workplace, the repercussions were equally swift and severe. Their superiors, unhappy with the distraction and toxic atmosphere the situation generated, made the decision to dismiss them. Raymond and Judith found themselves unemployed, their reputations tarnished, and their career plans destroyed. Their humiliation served as a cruel reminder of the wrath that truth, once revealed, can unleash upon those who dare to defy its inevitability. The story reaches a conclusion filled with harsh lessons but a hint of hope. Melissa, pregnant and settled in the house that was now legally hers, spent her days preparing for the arrival of her first child. 
The baby's room, once a storage space for unwanted items, was now a sanctuary of dreams and expectations, adorned with soft colors and carefully chosen toys. She and Pauline, bonded by the unexpected tie of adversity, became more than mother-in-law and daughter-in-law. They became confidants, supporting each other through times of drastic change. Their conversations stretched for hours, ranging from laughter to tears, strengthening the unusual friendship that had bloomed between them. Raymond, on the other hand, was left to grapple with the devastating consequences of his reckless actions. Homeless and jobless, he found himself marginalized, a shadow of his former self. As he tried to rebuild his life, he was just beginning to comprehend the weight of his decisions. And now, he asked himself, looking at the house that was once his, now shining with the light of Melissa's newfound hope. But only time could answer that question. The story closes with this image, a palpable contrast between the fruit of a foolish choice and the promise of a better future for those who had the courage to face the truth. Raymond, once enveloped in the security of his home and promising career, found himself abandoned and scorned by all who once knew him. His world, once filled with dreams and ambitions, crumbled before his eyes. In contrast, Melissa found strength amidst the chaos. She and Pauline, united by a strange twist of fate, found solace in each other. The house, which was once a symbol of Raymond's betrayal, now became a sanctuary of hope and renewal. She was determined to raise her child in a home filled with love and respect. Pauline, who once observed silently, became a rock of support for Melissa. The house, which had been in her family for generations, would now be her grandson's home. She felt a sense of justice, of setting things right. Our story concludes with a powerful image. Melissa, now the owner of the house, looking out the window with a pensive smile, caressing her pregnant belly, filled with dreams for her child's future. Pauline sitting beside her, sharing a moment of peace and acceptance. And Raymond, somewhere out there, learning the harshest lesson of his life, that every action has consequences, and that sometimes, justice arrives when least expected. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.